Hello, everybody. This is the Singer Model 457. It's in the stylist line of Singer. It's a very basic sewing machine, but very strong and uh, reliable, and has some versatility. I'm just going to give you a quick tour of the machine today. If we start up top, we have two spool pins. Um, there's two because you can double needle or twin needle sew on the 457. Up towards the top front here, we have a presser foot pressure adjustment from virtually no pressure for uh, darning, applique, like that, and then uh, as you need more and more pressure, you just dial it up. There is a number guide on there so that you can keep track of where your pressure setting is. Most of the stuff I saw around a three. Uh, this is a top thread guide. This is the thread uptake lever. You know, nothing I'm showing you here is new for Singer. This is the upper thread tension guide. It is uh, adjustable from zero tension up to the most, nine or ten. And it's got, tells you, as you turn it this way, you're going to less pressure. As you turn it to the positive side, more pressure. There's some thread guides here and here. There's a thread guide on the front here as we come down. I'll bring up the needle bar here. You can see that there's a needle bar thread guide and a needle holder slot. A typical thumb screw. This is a short slank, slant, uh, shank, short shank singer. <laughs> so it has the, sh the most common in the world short shanks on the uh, for the presser feet, and they're put on and off just with a typical thumb screw here to loosen and take off and tighten and put on. Like most machines in the world, there is a presser foot lifter right there. The lift the presser foot. The other action of this um, Singer machines is to open the tension disc for when you run your thread. This has a front drop-in bobbin. It uses a class 66 bobbin, uh, metal or plastic. I've been using the plastic for years um, because I find that the metal ones finally start wearing down the bobbin holder. And as this, you know, the bobbin goes around millions of times, and this gets worn down and the bobbin starts riding lower and lower in the holder and then you can get a thread dragging on the parts of the bobbin holder and mess up your stitch. I used to be able to buy brand new original bobbin holders like this. The last price I paid was about $50. Uh, now that seller doesn't have any more. So you can buy vintage, but you don't know if you're getting one that's any better than yours. So to save all of my metal bobbin holders of this type, I just use the plastic bobbins. To remove the needle plate, you just make sure that the slide plate is open all the way which has a mechanism underneath to 
pop up that on a spring and you just lift it right off. So to put it on, this is open all the way, slides on, you close it partially, and it pops down. Uh, to remove the bobbin holder for cleaning, there's this uh, positioning spring right here, which the manual tells you to lift with a screw. I usually can just lift with the tip of my finger or fingernail and you just lift it up and swing it over a little bit. And then you slightly twist counterclockwise and you can lift out the metal bobbin holder. Uh, of course when you, when you clean this, one area you want to watch for is this space right here. You'll get a lot of thread dust buildup in here as it uh, goes around the race of the hook. And uh, if you start skipping stitches and having problems, that's an area you definitely want to look at. So you can brush this out, vacuum it out, blow it out. There's the hook right there. This is a horizontal rotary hook. That's the actual hook right there that snags the thread. So as you sew, this hook has a continuous counterclockwise movement. And every second time it goes around, it snags the thread. So right there it would be snagging the thread, bringing it around, releasing the thread, Going around, you see the needle still up. On the second revolution, the needle's down, and the hook comes by to grab it again. So after you've cleaned and you oiled and so forth, you hold the bobbin like this. This little fork space up there goes right into a post. So you just go in with the tip of that and Usually you're going to move it horizontally left to right so that this area will slide right on the hook race and that fork is around the pin. Then you would lift up on that spring and move it to the left and now your position spring will hold the bobbin secure while you sew. So let me raise the needle, and we'll put that put that back, and we'll close the slide plate. Coming around on the front, this top uh, is just a simple left-right, left for special zigzag, and right for uh, blind hem sewing. So even though it's a basic machine, they did add this to the 457 because these are uh, stretch zigzag and blind hem are very common for uh, making clothes. Below that, on the front, we have a real standard switch with slide. So all the way left, zero is straight stitching. And then as you move it off of zero and towards the right, you start getting into zigzag. So you always want to be sure that your, your needle is up out of the fabric or needle plate and then you can slide. And it doesn't have to be exactly one. It can be one and an eighth, one and a half, a two, two and three quarters. It's a, just a sliding scale for zigzag. This is uh, one, one of the wonderful things about a lot of Singer machines for me is the needle position bracket. It's just mechanisms in here because you have a swing needle for zigzag. You, you know, most of the time you're going to be in the center position, but if you want to move the needle to the left to get closer to an edge or a zipper or move it to the right, that's all you do. And if you look down here at this needle bar, you can see it swinging left and right as I move it. So 
So, of course, you don't want the needle down into anything when you're trying to move it. You o always want to change your width or position with the needle up out of the needle bar and fabric. This is the stitch length. So you can go from the longest stitch or, or fewest stitches per inch, again on a sliding scale up to 20 and beyond 20 into fine and very fine, which was get into your satin stitches. Now you may have seen a lot of videos and you'll see in the instruction book about this knob here. You know, like a lock knob. And you, you don't have to utilize that to adjust or to sew. If you want to sew uh, 8 stitches per inch, you, you move that to 8 and you just sew. It's not going to move, it's not going to go to a 7 or a 9 or anything. Uh, if you put it up into 20 stitches per inch, it'll stay there. The whole mechanism and slide is, is very secure. The, what, what that's really for is, let's say you're going to be sewing some medium weight clothing, um, a blouse, or uh, a skirt, or maybe you're going to sew some curtains or something, and you know that most of your stitching is going to be at 12, if you lock this in like that, turning it to the right, it won't go below that. And why you'd want to do that is because a lot of times when you come to an end of a, of a run, you want to reverse and backstitch a little bit. The backstitch on this machine, you just go the lever up past the fine area. And the reverse stitching is even slightly available for length. But most people just throw it all the way up. So if you're locked in your stitch at 12, you could come to the end, throw it up to backstitch, just throw it right down, and it's going to stop at 12. So for me, I think of it more of a stop uh, knob than a lock knob. So if you're going to be sewing 10 stitches per inch and you, and you want to be using the reverse a lot, Set it at 10, tighten the knob, you can go up, and then it just quickly hit it right back down, and it will stop at 10. Uh, the bobbin winder system here is very, very simple. There's a bracket in here with a, with a side arm with a rubber tire that goes to the hand wheel. So you just snap your bobbin on here, and you move this. They say off and on. Really, you're just moving that lever over so the tire rubs against the hand wheel so that when you run the motor, this will turn. And this is a adjustable fill. So if you'd like to set your bobbin for half full or very full, you can loosen this with a screwdriver. And uh, let's see if I can get it on here. I'll just put a bobbin on and show you more light on there. So right now I have it adjusted so it's about, I don't know, what is that, a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch back from the edge. So if you're winding this as it, as it uh, fills up, it's going to, thread will start pushing against this, which will slowly push this away, removing the tire, and then it won't turn. So if you, if you like to just put the bobbin on and fill it full, you can adjust this that way and just hit go on the foot pedal and then as it gets to that point you've set, it pushes it away and stops. And uh, again, that, that is adjustable, you just loosen it and twist it a little where you want, half full, three quarter full, very full, or turn it away and just watch it with your eyes and fill it by hand. Uh, let me plug this in real quick and I'll show you the light switch. This is an on-off switch, which isn't plugged in, my cord. Oops. 
Sorry. And there. I'll turn this off for a minute. You can see the built-in light. So off, on. Works the light and the motor. Um, this is nice on these newer models. They just made a little pull down. It pulls down on the spring. So once the light is cooled down or it's burned out, you just push, turn back, pop the bulb out, push the new one in and turn it towards you like a bayonet and very easy to change. On off button. This is the uh, Bob and Winder thread tension ring. So when you uh, run your thread up to the bobbin to wind it, which I'll, I'll show you later, that's what that is for, to put an even tension so the bobbin thread winds very evenly. And if we continue around, you, you have the typical hand wheel, always turn towards you, and this is the stop motion. So if you just want to wind the bobbin, you'd hold the outer, turn the inner, left, you see, just turn a little bit. Then when you run the motor, it runs the wheel only, and if that's engaged, the bobbin winder, without running the feed dogs and the hook and so forth. When you finish and you want to sew, you hold the outer wheel, turn the inner wheel right. That's it. This has a three-way cord, uh, one way into the machine, one way to the electrical outlet, and one way to the foot pedal or speed controller. And it just simply plugs in like that. And if you have ever seen these little painted rubber pieces and you wonder what the heck is that? These, this will pull out and go around a cord. So if you do, this is table or cabinet mountable. So if you do want to mount it into a table, this would allow for the foot pedal cord to go in here inside the table to the knee lever. So that's what that little rubber gasket is for. These holes are just to make adjustments inside the machine. This is the back uh, side of the 457. This particular model you'll see made in Great Britain, which means Kill Bowie, Scotland. Um, is where the factory was for this. And just the Singer uh, badging or branding. Mm, these two little holes back here are to go on the hinges in a cabinet or table and then there's little holes for the set screws to lock it to the hinges, the hinge pins. So that's, that's a tour of the outside of the 457. I think I covered everything here. Let's, uh, in, the, in the next video, I'll do some bobbin winding and threading and so forth. But that's, that's the basic tour. Oh, uh, two screws up on the top to take off the cover for oiling and cleaning. And a typical oil pan with uh, one washer nut on the bottom to access the bottom, which you'll see in later videos. Singer Model 457 Starlet. Oh. Um, this is like the 347 that I I did the paint on this is a I don't know if it shows in the camera but it's a very slight orange peel so it's a little bumpy compared to like the 301 401A uh, 403 404 machines that were just glossy smooth this has a beautiful gloss a little egg peel and that, that prevents scratching much better. And uh, 
you know, pin scratches and fingerprinting, and it's very, it's very durable paint and cleans up really nice with just a damp, a damp cloth. Thanks for watching, folks.